Hi Mayans and welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time watching, I'm Melody Maya and I talk about everything in my transgender lesbian life that you would really like to know about but are afraid to ask. Because greater understanding makes the world a better place for all of us. And boy do we need some greater understanding today. Because this morning I woke up and I checked Twitter and what did I see trending? JK Rowling. Which didn't immediately alarm me because she's a mega famous person and who knows maybe she was announcing a new Harry Potter book. But then I read what she was trending for and it wasn't nearly that fun. Somewhere around 8 o'clock in the morning on the east coast of the US, she had tweeted the following. Dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real? And then it goes on the hashtag, I stand with Maya. And since Maya isn't spelled the way I do, I figured she wasn't standing with me. And wow, was I right. <laughs> because the Maya she was referring to is Maya Forstadter. And Maya Forstadter is a well-known TERF, a trans-exclusionary radical feminist. So JK Rowling's tweet made it plain and clear that she was aligning herself with anti-transgender people. She essentially came out as a TERF herself. For those of you who don't know, in the UK, there has been quite a lot of anti-trans press coverage. And the spark for that seems to be around something that they call the Gender Recognition Act, the GRA, which they've had for a while, but requires transgender people to submit to a government board to determine whether they are authentically a member of the gender that they proclaim themselves to be. So there has been a proposal to amend the GRA. The proposal would allow transgender people to create a legal document which says they intend to live the rest of their lives as their gender identity. And this has created quite an uproar, especially among TERFs, who make the argument that this would lead to the invasion of female spaces by biological men. Of course, there are cities like New York City, which has 8 million people in it, which already has self-ID that has never had an issue with this. And in fact, of course, transgender women have been using female spaces forever. This didn't just happen yesterday. And what's worse is that a lot of celebrities, a lot of blue tick people, so to speak, have gotten behind the anti-trans movement in the UK. One of them is Ricky Gervais, who's always posting anti-transgender stuff, but somehow is still allowed to host the Golden Globes. But as famous as Ricky Gervais is, it pales in comparison to the mega famous JK Rowling. So her statement today is going to have a lot of impact, a lot of negative impact on the transgender community. And for those of you who think it's just one tweet, it's not that big a deal. This is not the first time JK Rowling has supported TERFs. And the way she's done that up till now has been to like the tweets of other TERFs. In 2017, she liked this tweet by Janice Turner, which said, no fox has a right to live in a hen house, even if he identifies as a hen. So that immediately caught the attention of the transgender community, because of course, whatever she likes becomes big news. Everybody sees it. And she laid low for a year, but then in May 2018, she liked the following tweet. I was shouted out by men at my first labor party meeting, aged 18, because I asked them to remove a page three calendar. I've been told to toughen up, be louder, stronger, independent. I've often felt not supported. Men addresses get brochure solidarity I never had. That's misogyny. So after the previous like and then this like, it really caught people's attention, so much so that her publicist felt obligated to make a statement. I'm afraid JK Rowling had a clumsy and middle-aged moment, and this is not the first time she has favorited by holding her phone incorrectly. And of course, those of us in a trans community at this point were like, yeah, right, we're not buying it. And we've been saying for a while now, hey folks, JK Rowling is anti-transgender. All three tweets are saying that transgender women are men. Janice Turner's by referring to a transgender woman with masculine pronouns and referring to her as a fox in a hen house. And this woman Rachel's tweet by saying that trans women are men in dresses. And now we have JK Rowling's tweet, which if we break it down line by line, seems to indicate some sort of even handedness by saying dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you, and of course live your best life in peace and security. But really is telegraphing a specific worldview that she shares with other TERFs. That our gender identities are actually only clothes deep, that we're actually performing gender, we're not actually the gender we say we are. It really is just a transgender equivalent of a homophobic chestnut. Something along the lines of, hey, I have nothing against gay people, you can do whatever you want in the privacy of your own bedroom, I just don't want to see it. They're passing off limited tolerance as magnanimous. And that's what JK was doing as well, because those are exactly the beliefs of Maya Forstadter, the woman that she was saying she was standing with. Now Maya worked for a think tank, and when her contract came due to be renewed, it was not because her employer found out that she had been making anti-transgender tweets. And when Maya was not rehired, she decided to sue. And she was suing under the basis that her right to say that trans women are not actually women was a form of protected speech. And these are the tweets that she had put out there that concerned her employer. What I am so surprised that is the smart people who I admire, who are absolutely pro-science in other areas, are tying themselves in knots to avoid saying the truth that men cannot change into women because that might hurt men's feelings. The men she's referring to are people like me, transgender women. She also went on to 
say, I share the concerns of fair play women that radically expanding the legal definition of women so that it can include both males and females makes it a meaningless concept and will undermine women's rights and protections for vulnerable women and girls. And then finally, she just comes out and makes her prejudice very plain and clear when she says, some transgender people have cosmetic surgery, but most retain their birth genitals. Everyone's equality and safety should be protected, but women and girls lose out on privacy, safety, and fairness if males are allowed into changing rooms, dormitories, prisons, and sports teams. So what she's saying is that transgender women will always be biologically men and thus pose a threat. And in fact, because of that, should be excluded from women's spaces entirely. This is who JK Rowling was supporting. Someone who said in the court case documents, my belief is that sex is a biological fact and is immutable. There are two sexes, male and female. Men and boys are male, women and girls are female. It is impossible to change sex. These were very recently understood as basic facts of life by almost everyone. Science tells us that that is not true at all. There aren't just two sexes. There are a lot more than male and female. I mean, at the very least, intersex people exist. We know this as a scientific fact. Why is that something that they deny over and over? And when she said that men and boys are male and women and girls are female, really the reverse is also true from her point of view, which is that males, and as far as she is concerned, transgender women fall under males, are men and boys. And that that is impossible to change and then so forever and ever, I am always going to be a man. And in fact, the definition of woman that these turfs use is adult human female, which also means that a transgender woman can never be a woman. And JK Rowling obviously knows all of this because the last line of her tweet is, of course, but force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. So when you take the other parts of her tweet together with that line, she's basically saying that somebody like me is not actually a woman. Now, luckily for all of us, Maya Forstatter lost her case, which is what upset a lot of turfs and JK Rowling in particular. And Judge James Taylor, who apparently was no friend of Maya's, he wrote, I conclude from this and the totality of the evidence that the claimant is absolutist in her view of sex, and it is a core component of her belief that she will refer to a person by the sex she considered appropriate, even if it violates their dignity and or creates an intimidating, hostile, degrading, humiliating, or offensive environment. The approach is not worthy of respect in a democratic society. Youch, that hurt. <laughs> That is a pretty firm slap down. So these women and JK Rowling want to hold on to a definition of womanhood that is very essentialist, not to mention sexist. That is that women and womanhood is defined by biology. And they have the mistaken assumption that transgender women don't face the same discrimination they do. Somehow we still retain our male privilege, which of course is total bullshit. There is no brochalist movement that embraces us after transition. And acceptance has been extremely hard to come by and something we have fought for diligently and ceaselessly. But every time we make an advancement, somebody's pushing back. And they are pushing back right now hard, especially in the UK. And the fact that JK Rowling has now declared herself as part of the group of TERFs pushing back on trans women is incredibly disappointing for somebody who made an amazing world of acceptance and love. When her book created this concept of mudbloods and purebloods, it made a very obvious that the distinction between the two was a form of discrimination and bigotry. It's very sad that she hasn't taken to heart the very lessons she tried to teach the world, and that she has instead chosen to use her words to hurt a marginalized people. Somebody who made that point in a very touching tweet was Laura Zack, who quoted Dumbledore when she said, words are our most inexhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. Tragic how much the compassion of fictional characters exceeds that of their creator. Yeah, I agree, and I'm very, very disappointed. So that's where I'm going to leave the video off. If you have any feelings that you want to express about it, please put it in the comments below. As always, my social media is also down below, and if you have a dime to spare, please consider giving to my Patreon. And on that note, please like this video by giving it a thumbs up, please share this video, and please subscribe, and see you around the interwebs.